Chapter 6 Well Testing Safety Safety is a major factor in designing and conducting a well test. Piping, flow lines and all vent lines must be anchored. Piping must be color-coded to identify the working pressure of the pipe. All pieces of surface testing equipment must be grounded. Equipment layout and spacing must be in accordance with classified zones. The dominant wind direction must be identified to properly orient equipment that vents or burns gas. Electrical connections such as transfer pumps or laboratory cabins must be safe and approved according to industry standards. Classified zones. A well site is classified into zones or areas based upon the probability that flammable gases or vapors may be present around a specific piece of equipment. It is recommended not to overlap classified zones. Zone restrictions do not dictate the placement of all well test equipment. For example, the ESD system and oil and gas manifolds, usually placed in zone 2, are not restricted to that specific zone. For further information on the zone classifications, see API 64B. Zone 0 Area where any flammable or explosive substances are continuously present. For example, the borehole, the well below the wellhead. Zone 1. Area where any flammable or explosive substances are processed, handled, or stored. For example, the gauge tank, gas release from vent in the immediate vicinity. The choke manifold, sampling causes some gas release. The flow head, due to tools introduction during a well test. When tools introduction are not being made, the flow head is zone 2. Most electric driven transfer pumps. Zone 2. Area where any flammable or explosive substances are processed and stored under controlled conditions. For example, the separator in case of a leak. The indirect fired heater because it uses a naked flame. The steam exchanger because it can reach high temperatures. Piping is defined as a zone 2 area. Diesel-driven transfer pumps, if equipped with automatic shutdown system, sparks arresters, inertia, or special electric starters. Clean zone, also called non-hazardous or safe areas. Area where no flammable or explosive substances are processed, handled, or stored. For example, the living quarters of an offshore drilling rig. Onshore recommended distances. This picture shows for an onshore rig or land operations the recommended zones distances around each piece of the surface well testing equipment. It also shows the recommended distances to be considered between each of these individual pieces. Offshore recommended distances. This picture shows for an offshore rig operations the recommended zones distances around each piece of the surface well testing equipment. It also shows the recommended distances to be considered between each of these individual pieces. Equipment Safety Standards The top area around the separator rupture disc pipe is classified as Zone 1 with 15 feet or 5 meter around. The area within 15 feet above the roof of the gauge tank is classified as Zone 1. H2S requirements and safety. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S, is a dangerous gas because it has a wide explosive range and is highly toxic. H2S properties. Color, none. Odor, extremely offensive, smells like rotten eggs. Density, 1.189, it is heavier than air. Explosive limits, 4.3% to 46%. Ignition temperature, 500 degree Fahrenheit, or 260 degrees Celsius. Water solubility, for volumes, of H2S gas, is soluble in one volume of water at 32 degree Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius. H2S toxicity. At 1 ppm concentration, or 0.0001%, H2S can be smelled. If more than 1 ppm, leave the area or use PPE. 
At 10 ppm concentration, or 0.001%, a maximum 8 hours work period is allowed. If the H2S concentration is more than 100 ppm, or 0.01%, the odor disappears, the eyes and the throat burns, loss of consciousness, permanent brain damage or death. H2S Operation Guidance Mandatory pre-job safety meeting for all personnel involved. Constant supervision of the job and use a minimum of two experienced H2S certified engineers or technicians. Do not allow H2S to escape into the atmosphere in any place where it can accumulate. Monitor the wind direction constantly. Wear breathing apparatus, when surface sampling, measuring gas-specific gravity, changing Daniel orifices and chokes, bleeding off pressure, and walking on burner boom. Operate instruments with compressed air. In addition to its adverse health effects, H2S is highly corrosive to metals. Equipment not positively identified as H2S service must be assumed to be not rated for H2S service. Welding performed outside a qualified shop on H2S equipment invalidates the H2S rating. Piping with threaded connections is not rated for H2S service. Use only a surge tank offshore. Never use an atmospheric gauge tank offshore. Heat radiation. Problems associated with heat radiation arise primarily during burning operations and are a serious problem for both personnel and equipment. 330 British thermal unit per hour per square feet is the greatest solar radiated heat at soil level. 440 British thermal unit per hour per square feet is the upper limit for harmless exposure of bare human skin. 1500 British thermal unit per hour per square feet is the API, RP521, recommended upper limit for an oilfield worker, wearing work clothes, and intermittently sheltered, or sprayed with water. Easy solutions for managing excess heat are to inject water into the flame. Use longer booms, 85 feet or 26 meter. Install additional water screens behind the burners. Install water ramps alongside the hull where excess heat can be radiated. Noise pollution. Air protection is critical for all personnel exposed to noise during well test operations. According to the ISO noise exposure recommendations, at 90 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is 8 hours per day. At 95 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is 4 hours per day. At 100 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is 2 hours per day. At 105 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is 1 hour per day. At 110 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is half an hour per day. At 115 decibel noise level, the permissible exposure is 10 minutes per day. For example, a separator flowing 4,000 barrels oil per day with a GOR of 300 generates a noise level of 62 decibel. From 100 feet, a 6-inch gas line with 10 million standard cubic feet per day generates a noise level of 96 decibel and with 35 million standard cubic feet per day, the noise level is 107 decibel. Electrical safety. Electrical equipment located in hazardous areas must meet protection standards. The most commonly used means of protection are intrinsic safety. This is a protection technique for safe operation of electrical equipment in hazardous areas by limiting the energy, electrical and thermal, available for ignition. Explosion proof. Meaning that the enclosure of the electrical equipment, classified as explosion proof, must be able to internally withstand any internal explosion, any sparks generated internally, and preventing these sparks from igniting any vapors, gases, fibers, or dust in the surrounding environment. Thank you for your attention. This is the end of today's presentation. In the next video presentation, Chapter 7, you will learn about the different types of well tests. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel in order to help us produce more content like this one.